Hi, good afternoon. So, yeah, parallel realities. As NetWays has recently been to Amsterdam, and we're in Berlin today, I thought it was the right moment to, and the right place to talk about mind augmenting drugs. So, let's start with LSD. No, I'm just, just kidding. Um, parallel realities is something different here right now. Um, I'm Thomas. For those who don't know me yet, I'm yeah, working with Netverse in Nuremberg since more than 10 years right now. Um, moved there from northern Italy, from the Italian Alps, South Tyrol. And yeah, work a lot with customers, so my principal job is working as a kind of consultant with our customers, um, building solutions there. A lot of uh, many of our components and modules or features um, have been developed that way. Yes. They have some specific needs. I get the crazy idea of how we could transform this into something that's useful for the customer and for our product. It's then always pretty challenging because on the one side you have to make the customer happy and I cannot leave on Friday and say, I'm sorry, um, maybe next year. Um, on the other side, we the, just the part that custo the customer needs uh, is often easy to complete, but very hard to make it in a generic way, to have it in an op open source way for everybody with all the little knobs and fiddles and configurable and so on. So yeah, but I love it. It's it makes a lot of fun because if you are there right in place and have a lot of toys to play with, then you can be very fast if you test in production with production of other people. So that's that's very nice. Um, what about you? Um, this talk assumes that you already have some idea about your single director, what it is all about, what or more or less what you can do with it. Um, so just to get an idea, who here has I don't know ever heard about your single director? Okay, who is uh, already using it? Okay, and yours? What's well, we'll convince you today. Um, one more thing, who is working in a pretty small, tiny company? Uh, middle, mid-size, let's say up to 300 people, and large corporations? Okay, so pretty, and the other ones do not work at all? <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, cool. So, what are we really talking about? Um, we last year we started one project with a customer. I think I cannot name him. Um, can I? No. Um, they had some very specific needs, and we wrote a lot of code for the single director. Had a lot of changes, also schema changes in the single director 1.9, which has been released quite some time ago. But uh, until today, we. We didn't publicly, publicly talk about this, didn't explain why we did so, so I'm super excited today because now I can show a little baby we developed um, that's waiting to get released for some time. Um, so yeah, um, to sum up some of the requirements they had is like they wanted to have all changes documented, something we already have with the activity log, but they also wanted to add some annotations. Um, they wanted to have kind of like review changes only. Um, they already had teams uh, locked uh, locked down with permissions to just some host groups, uh, some patterns, some whatever, so they can modify or tweak only their own, or every team can modify configuration only relevant to their own service and their own uh, setup. Um, but still, yeah. We always trust only ourselves, but never other people from other teams. So, um, what if they change the IP address? What if they do something wrong? What if they pick a silly threshold? So, we, we need more control over them. So, this is more or less the, the requirements we had uh, for this um, for this feature. And we wanted to create some kind of um, yeah uh, parallel reality where can, we can play with things, try it out, and um, like merge it if it works, like you know it from Git. Yeah? So having different branches, uh, having configuration, having div, having tools allowing you to do reviews, having maybe pull requests, whatever. This is something we, all, we are used to today. But 
Here we are talking about a relational database, and um, having these things combined together can become yeah, quite tricky. You know how you can it can even have a, a database based backend for Git, but this is not what we have in the director. We have we have objects that do not even exist. We have apply rules that gen gen that generate services that are not there in the in the database yet, but you still want to manage them. Um, you have inheritance, so you have uh, templates, you change the template, it has an effect on a lot of other objects, and if, if you have different branches, this is going to get very, very tricky. And then, of course, in the UI, you have different views, you have joins, you have permissions. Um, all this combined with some Git backend or Git-like thing is, um, sounds, yeah, it's a nice idea, but no, it will not happen. And, but, but, Chuck Norris counted to infinity twice. So, twice. So, why shouldn't then we be able to tackle such a simple challenge? So, and so we said, of course, it's possible. Um, we did some estimates on the time, and we started. We started over three times because it will be turned out to be very complicated. But finally, we we were able to implement it and. Um, Today I will not talk about the uh, technical details, maybe some of them. Mm, we changed a lot in the database. We have uh, we introduced, introduced UUIDs for most of our objects right now, something um, obvious, what you can easily do if you, are, if you start from scratch. But if you have an existing database schema and a lot of integrations and people already working with IDs and so, then you have to be stay compatible in some way with what's already there. So, mm, yeah, we... Maybe I just show you sh two queries as an example. So this is a, a very simple host list in the director. If you go to that um, to that advanced actions and say show SQL, and then if you have the right permissions, you can you're shown the query used for that table for the for fetching the objects and for counting the amount of pages. Um, if I enable a branch view right now in the director, the same queries look like this. Just to give you an idea of how this. Um, there's some detail in here that which um, yeah, we have Postgres and we have MySQL and uh, we have to join like the reality, the parallel reality objects that have been created in the reality, in the real reality, and uh, objects that have been deleted in the <laughs> fake one that have been created there. So, um, speaking SQL, you need a full auto join, something MySQL, for example, doesn't have. So you have to emulate this. This is something that overcomplicates this a little bit, but there are other things in there like um, deleting properties and so on. So uh, this is already in Director 1.9. Uh, so little side effects and bugs that appears from all these changes have already been fixed a while ago, and um, this is. It works this way. Just so let's stop with the details, just to give you uh, an idea of what we have been working with. Um, director branches is the name of this toy. Uh, you can it's an add-on module. You can drop it to your modules folder like every other module, enable it, and that's it. You don't need to restart the daemon. Uh, much of the logic is already in the director itself, so you just enable it. Uh, it extends your UI, and, and it works. So if you enable the module, we'll see it right now um, in a short demo, uh, you get some new dashlets on your dashboard, given you have the required permissions, and you can do more with your existing single director. Um, okay, uh, questions still here? Then I will go on and let's have a look. Um, I'll show you some short scenarios just to give you an idea of how to, how, uh, what, what this tool does. If you, if you play with this, it's uh, easier to show. Um, so, first scenario is um, I have different teams, I want to, they are already limited and restricted, see only parts, some hosts, or in my example, they are also locked down, they are, also, they are able to create only hosts according to some specific rules and so on, and we want to lock them in a dedicated branch. So that's what we're going to do right now. I have, I prepared two browsers. This is my administrator account, has a lot of features, um, does hard work, so works with the light UI. That's uh, a hipster team, they need dark modes. 
Not so much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, what we see here is um, I'm just allowed to work with hosts and some downtimes, so special permission here. And um, I have branches here, and I'm, I'm being told that I'm currently wor working in a configuration branch. And we see later on how this is going to be configured. The administrator uh, configured that team. This, uh, the user is John Doe. It's in a team called Buddies, and Buddies have a restriction, and they are locked in a branch named Buddies Together. So that's what has been configured right here. And, um, I can work with the director. Usually there are some hosts. I can, let's say, add a new one. Um, these are some very stupid templates here. Um, John 1. Then, oh, I forgot the IP address. Let's make another change. Oh, it's the wrong one. Change it. I also want to change the name just to get some, some changes at a service. We can dummy template. This name is uh, dummy in my branch. And so maybe custom property. And so on. So these are these are my changes, and um, different from you know the director that you are used to. There are some some slight changes, like for example, information that this object has been created in the configuration branch. Um, if you click there, you see only this user has no permissions for uh, history for the activity log, so he is not allowed to see configuration. He is not allowed to see the activity log. You can combine this. It's just th this one is very restricted, and uh, but he sees his own changes in this branch. Um, he's allowed to merge, or um, merging and asking for a merge or different permissions, so he's not allowed to really merge, he's just, just allowed to express that he wants to merge, like this is a pull request, we just w didn't want to introduce too many new words. Um, so as he says, yeah, I want to merge it. Or wait, no, not yet. Let's go to the administrator. Here I have full control. Let's look in the branches. Okay, there are multiple ones. Let's have a look at, oh, there is this bodies together. I see the same changes. I can see, oh, I'm sorry. Ah, I'll explain you. This is, wait. Uh, sorry. Let's disable this. Okay, you, um, so you see the changes. I clicked here not on the change, but on the object itself. And come on, I get a 404. And this was the exception before, this is not found. Why? Because I'm, I see his changes, but I'm not in his branch. Okay? But I have the possibility to activate his branch. So now I switch reality, like git checkout. And now I'm working in his branch. And now this one exists, uh, sorry. The service exists. So, yeah, this is how this part works. Um, in my activity log, because I have permission for the activity log, this looks different. You can see these are uh, changes in the main branch, these are changes in the in this configuration branch only. And here, like the deploy button is missing. I cannot, uh, I cannot deploy here because I am, I am in a branch. And, but I can go to this branch and say, I want to merge it, and then it deploys this one. Mm. Back to John. If he says, yes, I want to merge it, my branch is gone. So the branch is now ready for work. Internally, a new one for, uh, so no, the branch has been place there ready for f to being merged. But the problem is, I define that this user is restricted to a branch. So what internally happened right now is, a new one has been created with the same name. He's working there. The pull request is waiting elsewhere. He is right now in an empty branch, sitting on the main, on the real reality, with no changes right now. He could start other changes. Um, if I go back to the administrator, um, you can see the branch has been renamed for me. I have been I f uh, formerly I have been working in the in the branch named enforced 
bodies or something like that. And now it's uh, it has a special name. It is a um, merge request for bodies together. Um, but let's assume that I'm not there. Let's go. Um, wait. I am. I'm still there now. Let's deactivate it and go back to our dashboard. Because what I see here also is I have merge requests pending. There's one merge request waiting for me, and um, I go there. This is a pending merge request. Let's have a look. I see the changes, same as before. It's the same view, more or less. I can say, OK, um, let's, let's merge it. Or oh, here, it's the same. And um, go up our. OK, so um, merged. Branch is gone. Changes are have been applied. Activity, look, you see, the, ch the color changed. Formerly it has been blue, now it is yellow. You have changes that have not, not been deployed, and all the, they all together have this change. So you, you see the message, what has been done. Um, yeah, the rest is like normal activity log. is something you, you know about. OK, um, let's stop this example. Back to my slides. Uh, I have an answer for one question here. Um, we now we have seen that John has been in this branch named Enforced Buddies or something like that. Um, what if um, I, ha I want to have one branch per user? Do we then have create to create one role per user or so? Mm, no. Just. Let's have a look of how the, the permissions for this looks like. You see the director branches module in the I think a web configuration backend, and you see this group gets only the permission general module access. Uh, it's not he's not allowed to create branches. I can also allow users to create custom branches. John has not been allowed to do so, so he uh, has been locked into this very single branch. He's not allowed to merge on its own, so he has to he clicks on merge nonetheless. But he, in the message, he, he has been told. Your merge request will wait for someone who merges it. And um, you could also give someone the permission to read all branches but not merge them. Um, he got granted none of those permissions. He just had uh, the enforced branch restriction, and the name was um, Restricted Buddies. And if instead of like a name, you can, or in the name, you can use a placeholder username. So if you uh, do the same thing as an enforce branch username, then every user or every user with this role gets locked into his very own branch. Everybody has his very own changes, and you can merge them. Just to complete this example. Um, next scenario. I'm a uh, administrator. Just, you know, I have fat fingers, and I'm looking at the slides while typing here, so uh, I fear to to deploy something bad to production, I want to protect me from myself. So um, the question is, can I lock myself into a branch? And the answer is, of course you can. Um, let's have a look at those branches. So I have more features here. I'm now a, you can give or grant those permissions to different teams. Right now I'm a full admin, but you're not required to be a full administrator for this. I can create a new branch, give it a name, camp, and the branch is empty. If you want to start working, it says, then you should activate it. So let's activate the branch. Now it says, OK, then please go on, work. And what this does is just it goes here, and you start and do something useful. Same here. You can do, let's, I don't know, let's delete something. Um, let's pick some hosts, delete all of them. Um, services. Oh, this is inherited. Let's override it, and so on and so on. So you have inactivity log. You have changes, you deleted it, and so on. Um, but maybe oh, I didn't want to, to delete my huh, fat finger problem. So what should I do? Nothing. You can just you can disable or deactivate the branch. You can also throw it away, delete, and this never happened. Mm. Yeah. Um, you can also, of course, like I have an old branch here. You can you can work in this one. Do some changes. 
deactivate it or activate another one. Jump between them. Just like just like eat branches. This very simple example, but you know, fat fingers we are covered. It's, you can, of course, if you forget to activ activate your branch and work uh, in the main branch, then we eventually we could add. No, it works. It, it's it's possible. You can create a group where you uh, give permissions to manage branches and do not give them permissions to deploy. So you can really, or even you can do not give them the permission to deploy and not give them the permission to, to merge branches. So uh, just if you are a full admin, you still have the, of course, the ability, or the possibility to turn off the branch. Um, next example is a little bit more complicated resolve conflicts. What happens, you know, uh, who loves resolving Git conflicts? <coughs> oh, come on, it's fun. You copy the directory to another one, make a completely new diff by hand, and make a force push, and everything works again. Um, no, let's see. Um, let's pick John again. He is now in his empty branch, and he picks, I don't know, one host and makes some changes. And, pff, I don't know, delete the service. Yeah, <laughs> this was intentional. And so he, um, let's, let's see what he is doing. Uh, no, Baris Together was the right one. And there we see what he did. He's stupid. Let's give him, give him a good lesson. So let's go to the host, throw it away. Let's see if he will notice. What happens if I now want to? Oh, wait, 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 wait. No. I deleted it in my branch. It's stupid. Uh, let's go back to, to the main branch. Let's pick the host again. Was it one or two? Uh, one. And delete it here. And now, let's pick his branch. Uh, sorry, there's no, okay. Let's ask for merge. But you can also merge it without John asking for doing so. And what should happen right now? I want to merge, and it says, wait, um, I cannot apply the configuration change because this host doesn't exist. Uh, and it um, offers conflict resolutions. So it says, well, skip to modify this host or skip modifications for any missing object. Uh, so you, maybe you say, skip this one, one time, two times, three times. After the fourth one, you say, huh? One more conflict, it cannot delete the service, it doesn't exist. Okay, now I, I am not so patient, skip it for every object, so merge. Oh! Um, I skipped all changes in the branch right now, and I didn't deal with this. Yeah, it will be fixed. Okay. Well, but uh, if you do not skip, let's, let's try again, merge it. Oh, wait. Let's go to the branch. Because I have to skip them. What is together? No, this is empty. It's the ah, merge request here. Activate the merge request. Add one more change. Go back. Merge it right now. Skip modification for an object, okay. Skip delete for any missing object. These are two, two different kinds of skips. So you skip deletion for missing object and you skip modifications. And now it merges. So what we learned, there is a bug. You cannot have conflicts in every change in your branch. It will be fixed. Um, yeah, that's it more or less. So I just wanted to show you conflict resolution is something we, we thought about. 
um, you can imagine this in a way, these branches are automatically rebased all the times. So this is kind of a uh, virtual rebase all the times. And um, as long as this user stays in his branch, he might not notice that we deleted the host, as he already worked on with it. But uh, as soon as you go back, you will have a merge conflict. Uh, why did this jump service? Uh, I have a last one. Um, automation. Yes, we have um, a, you know, you want to automate things and maybe you do not trust your automation. Like um, you want to, um, you want to sync from external sources, but you want to review them first. May maybe so. If you are working fully automated, this is something that's not. In my beliefs, makes no sense. So if you have changes every ten minutes, you want to deploy them in an automated way. If you destroy everything automated, then let's go. Um, but if you have sources that have only changes from time to time, like you have a CMDB and um, synchronize from there, um, then you, you can also say, wait, but all the changes from there are applied in an automated way, but I want to review them before we deploy them. So um, this was also one of the requirements of one of, just more than one, one of the customers that sponsored uh, this, this uh, development, so, um, or part of it. And yeah, let's let's have a look. Back to, Administrator, um, let's. Yeah, I have a lot of strange sources and synchros here, um, but it's very simple. Let's uh, just pick a branch, activate it, and I'll pick this one. I don't care. I pick a random synchro. Let's see if there is a diff. Uh, no, sorry, synchro. Oh, this one has changes. Yeah. Oh, there is something new here. Um, so this, for the working with director branches, director 1.9 is enough. Um, this feature here is um, is in director 1.10. I think I'll, we'll take it on Monday. Um, then because we now started to pick some features from that branch implementation and used it as a base for all the features right there. If you know the, the sync preview, if you have a sync definition and say, um, and you click on preview, and if you have thousands of changes, this is something they are calculated in that moment. They're not applied to the database. So um, the problem there was for the UI, I, I cannot offer pagination because recalculating thousands of changes on every click is kind of uh, stupid and mm, we didn't want to cache it so uh, the sync preview showed just the first 50 objects that they're going to create show the diff only for objects uh, also for a few objects and then end 100 more and just the names of the objects that are going to be deleted and also for the objects that are going to be created you only uh, have been shown the name of the object and not all the properties because if i'm going to uh, show thousands of changes on one page um, your browser uh, goes crazy and your notebook starts to heat up so um, this was kind of reduced right now we use the branches as a uh, underlying technology for the new preview sync preview changed a little bit and um, but this also I'm in the branch right now, but we are using the same technology also if you're not in a branch. We are creating a dummy branch on the fly internally to just pre-calculate the sync preview. So what changes is if you have lots of changes here right now, you can paginate here. You can see every change, and for every change that's going to happen, you see the preview what this sync is going to do. And um, I think I stop here. So the oh, what you can do if you sync here, you see usually there is an apply button. Right now it says sync to branch Tom Lala. And well, that's it. I sync to the branch. What? Oh, I deleted it. Okay, that's that's right. Um, that's correct, yeah. I cannot sync it. Conflict resolution is missing for sync, but that's. Does this make sense? Okay, so I'll add it. Second, but conflict resolution for sync is missing. Yeah, okay, but uh, you can uh, can merge it here. It's uh, so this sync is a merge, but with no uh, 
conflict resolution form. It has a predefined uh, message in the activity log where it says sync, sync name has been applied, and then you say in the activity log all the changes for this sync together, and and that's it. So, yeah. Um, I think that's it. And branch is a parameter if you're going to automate it. And yeah, We're running out. Oh, time is still. So let's move on to the most important question: Is it available? Can I have it? And uh, has there been a release? That's what parent always asks. And yes, it is ready. You can have it. And there has been a release, two of them. With two, no, yeah, that's, um, yeah. <laughs> there will be more releases. No, so, um, talking about the director branches module, this one, uh, version one, has been taken back in February, but this was not available. We just gave it to the customers that sponsored pa parts of the de development and got some feedback from them. And um, we released version 1.1 today. Got mostly documentation updates. In the module itself, there were not no technical changes, so this still works with Director 1.9. And as I told you, direct, uh, Director 1.10 will be released Monday, and uh, there will be just, just a two new features related to uh, to the branches. That sync is possible there. That was not possible with Director 1.9, and service sets are also part of the components that you can work with in a branch. Oh, there are, of course, things to be still, or we initially defined that they're not going to happen in the branches, at least not in the first version, like working with templates. That will happen, but it's not in, the f in this version. So you can, right now, not tweak templates. Also with Director 1.10, you cannot tweak templates in a branch. This is, it's pretty complicated, but it's, it's going to happen. Um, and this requires an Asina subscription. And then you might ask, but a subscription? Subscription isn't isn't it free? Yes, uh, director branches is free, like free uh, as in speech, not as in beer. So it has been licensed as GPL version two, still open source, but you need a subscription to be able to download it. And so if you have uh, whatever kind of subscription, this is part of your subscription, and it's already there for download right now. Full source code is included, as as always. Um, Documentation is online. These links work already. There's documentation for the latest module. And if you have a subscription right now, you can download it right now from here, drop it in your module folder, enable the module, and everything I did right now, apart from the sync preview, is there and working. Um, which uh, right now is only a tar, uh, tar file that we created today. Packages will follow. And that's it. Do you have questions? Dave has one. Here's Dave. A couple of different questions, actually. Um, for the merge request mm -hmm. to the admin, can you have a webhook or is there an Isinga check for? Merge request so that admin can be notified that there is one? Uh, not yet, but this is a very good idea. Okay. <laughs> Write that down. Um, second, secondly, was um, the big problem we'd love to solve is that we'd love to have an import source and our automation commit changes to a different Isinger instance, which is yeah. effectively like a dev version. And then once that's okay, I'd like to actually promote those changes into prod. Yes. Is that possible with this in terms of plumbing things in? So I, I don't care about the actual director config, I care about the real actual check working, if you know what I mean. So I've got two whole instances. Yeah. One director yes. can send to one for prod and one for dev. Okay. The dev instance. But they generate the same config, like you have the same host names. Yeah. Everything the same. Everything the same, okay. except dev is ahead of prod. Okay, yeah, yeah just to make sure that the firewall rules are in place, that the rest of it works, that it actually you know, is plumbed in correctly before. You know, because often the first time you deploy a check, it's wrong. It's too noisy. You get all these mm -hmm. notifications. And so it'd be nice to have a dev environment. Is, can, can branches plumb into that at all? Does that help with that? So, 
We can talk later on how to automate this, because there are some, there's some tooling for this. Uh, what I usually have is like you have a dev environment, you have a prod environment, and you have different objects you're monitoring, but uh, you are, have the same uh, like templates and apply rules and so on. And so this is something where um, there are some very nice features, like for example, you create your templates and everything you need and put them in a basket. And you can configure, this is hidden a little bit, you can configure a second database source if you want in a director. And then if you restore, like if you, you pick a snapshot and then you say restore, pick the other database instance and then it d shows you the diff to the other instance and then you push everything there, for example. Or you can do it on CLI and so on. So, But this is for uh, setups where you just m uh, create a monitoring definitions like checks and services and so on, uh, or templates in your and your dev environment and the prod environment has different hosts but the same checks and is back in time. Like, uh, But um, shipping all the changes, but let's talk later on. So this not just branches doesn't help there, but th there should be a lot of tooling ready we could use for this. Next one. Interesting ideas. Do we have any more questions? Anyone? Last chance? All right. Thank cool. you very much, Tom. I think Thank you. you will be around, right? Uh, yeah, I'll be here. Yeah.